nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is video number 38 in our series NerdDice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails 7 application to manage tabletop role playing. And we're in the process now of uh, starting to do some market research and user research, uh, but there are three uh, kind of code base things that we can take action on kind of while I'm in the process of setting up those uh, and conducting those user interviews. So I'm going to um, um, do three videos to uh, kind of set up and uh, take care of these items in our backlog. Uh, the first one is just a matter of um, dependencies change just by the, the passage, passage of time. Uh, so there's a new version of both Ruby and Rails since the last time we committed to this repository. Uh, committing, updating the Ruby version, uh, the way that we've currently got things set up, our, our build on the GitHub Actions will actually fail if we don't update our, uh, our Ruby version and have that Ruby version noted in our repo. Uh, done this before, both I think to Ruby 3.1.3 and to 3.2.0 after it was released on Christmas. Uh, so uh, it'll be some of that. And then also if we take a closer look at this issue, uh, Rails has recently within the past week or so uh, released version 7.0.4.3, which um, addresses some security dependabot alerts that we've got in our repo. So as of right now, uh, rock, 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 paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, good old dependable rock, nothing beats rock. Anyway, I think that was a biodome reference, I want to say. Uh, rack and active support both need to be updated in our bundle. Updating Rails uh, will uh, take care of both of these. Um, or at least, and then I'm just going to do a general bundle update. There's also an issue that was re referenced in a previous video where the debug gem was not um, properly registering its dependencies uh, and it was causing GitHub Actions to fail and I kind of had to uh, set that to a specific version and leave it alone um, the last time I updated my bundle. So I'm going to see if I can figure out a solution for that as well while I'm at it since this is kind of all bundle and dependencies related. So we are in progress here. Uh, let's get our VS Code open. See, we're running 7.0.4.2. And then we'll also launch a terminal here. Got our terminal. Uh, we'll take a look at the the previous commit where we updated our bundle or our Ruby version. So here, um, so it's a matter of making the the change in the workflow won't be necessary because we're still on made minor version three point two. Uh, we need to change our .ruby version file. Uh, we need to make sure that our gem file uses uh, 3.2.1, and then we'll wind up um, running bundle update as we deal with the uh, the Rails version issue later. So the Ruby dash version will update this to 3.2.1. Let me, before I do that, let me see what we've got running currently. Three point point oh. So yeah, we do need to. Um, let me see if I've got. We got three point two point oh. We do not have three point two point one installed at a system level, but I will make the change to the Ruby version here and the Ruby version in our gem file. And 
and then the next thing I need to do is RVM. I'm using RVM. I've got a video where I installed Ruby and Rails, uh, or R Ruby using RVM. Um, if you are using a different uh, Ruby version manager like CH Ruby or um, something else, uh, you just use the commands that you have for that. So install 3.2.1 pause and let that complete. All right, that's done. That only took about 15 seconds. I probably didn't really need to pause it. If you've been around Ruby for a while, you can know that this used to take like five minutes to install a new Ruby version. So uh, that performance of that install process has gotten a lot better. Uh, now we need to do RVM use 3.2.1 Alt, yeah, list. That is our current and default Ruby. Now we, the next thing we're going to do is, um, I'm just going to do a general. Let me see if I've got the. Um, debug. Version locked here. I will attempt the bundle update and then we'll see what changed here. Tailwind CSS Rails takes it a little while to install, um, but it appears to be done. Now let's get diff gem file dot lock. Let's see whether anything happened to debug on us. Just to see in our gem file lock what's going on with debug. So that that stayed the same. Let's see. Get, I'll, I'll also make sure that rack is 2.6.6.4. That should clear our alert. Looks like, yeah, to 2.6.6.4 or later. So that gives us what we need. And now we'll do a Rubocop. See if we have any new violations. Rubocop Capybara. We'll just leave that alone. Uh, we won't address that right now. And then we will attempt a Rails test system test. Uh, system tests uh, take a little while here, so I'll pause and let these complete. All right, so we've got a bunch of failures. I think they're all related to our devise uh, tests. Um, so the if we look at our issues log, uh, Devise has released version 4.9.0, but uh, we've already got a separate um, backlog item to deal with that. So what I'm going to do for the time being is lock Devise. Huh. 
Search me. Still at 4.8.1. Take a look at this. Wonder if the responders gem got updated. That might be the issue there. Let me see. just says responders 3.1.0 so that did change three point zero point one to three point one point oh so let's see if we can lock that back to three point zero point one redo a bundle install okay so that's 5.0 we need to change the dependencies here hack this gem file dot lock. All right, so that worked. Let me just run one of, one of the failing tests here and see if that solved our issue. So that completed without issue. Uh, the I'll rerun the full suite there and see if that um, solves our issue for the time being. Pause and let this finish. All right, so that got our full suite back to passing. Uh, so let me see if there's anything else. So we run rubric. Let me take a look at the debug gem. So uh, we also ran into issues with debug here. That is running 1.7.1. I mean, what did I have? Did I have a version constraint on it at all prior to the failures? Take a look at the commit history. So in my gem file, I have Store this. So make debug what it was before. And then I'm going to, similar to how I hacked the responders version here, I'm going to do the same thing with debug. We'll make this 1.7.1, and then this requires IRB and reline. We need to match those dependency values there. So 1.5.0 and 0.3.1. And 0.3.1 remains the value there. We'll do a bundle install. And let's see if our version of debug got installed here. Using debug.
debug 1.7.1. So um, since that was a change, I'll rerun my tests one more time, pause and let that complete. All right, so everything has passed. Let me get status. I'm on the main branch, so we want to uh, get checkout. Yes. All right. So we've got that. Make sure Rubocop is still pleased with us, other than the copy bar thing, which we'll leave for another time. We will get status, review our diff. So our Ruby version file gets updated. Our gem file version of Ruby matches that. The We reverted the constraint on debug and then made some upgrades in our uh, gem file dot lock. Notably, we kept, um, we kind of hacked in the correct dependencies for debug, and we uh, added a particular constraint on the responder gem so that it doesn't use the latest version of that until we go in and um, decommission the device hacks that we've got going on. So we will git add, git commit, and sign it. Pause and write my message. All right, I've got my commit message here. I will now push this to the to GitHub on the remote. Push that. We will open a pull request back into main. Sign myself to it. And we'll pause and let our build complete. All right, our build has succeeded, so we can go in to our pull request. As is my custom, I will merge from the command line. Hit push. local branch, delete my remote branch, go to my issue, close with comment and then in my backlog the issue is closed there so we'll see you in the next video where we work on fixing some errors in our contributing file that one shouldn't take that long to do Ruby on Rails 7 is out Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. 
Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.